I thought I would try and say a, a, a word about the, sort of the exam question about democracy. I actually came to this institution years and years ago to do a PhD. And walking through the door, I hadn't, which I hadn't done for quite a long time, reminded me of that. My PhD was on broadband telecommunications. And at that point, it seemed absolutely obvious that in the very near future, we would all have fiber, cab fiber optic cables to our homes. Uh, this was before the internet was invented. And we'd be getting the daily this and that on our phones and our TVs and so on. And the amazing thing is, it took much longer to happen than we expected. And probably not many of you in this room actually have a fiber optic cable coming into your home. You should try living in the Scottish borders. Then you get that. <laughs> you have nothing. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and in a way, the, so the, the moral of that story is how many things you think are going to change don't change as fast as you expect. But if you then think, ah, oh, they're never going to change, you get it wrong. They do change, but they just take a bit longer. And I think the same is true of, of democracy. There's a quotation from Bertolt Brecht, which I particularly like, um, which some of you may know, where he asked, how long do works of art endure? Do any of you know what the answer is to that question? And it's a surprising answer. He says, as long as they are not completed, which is not what you can, it's obviously not quite true of Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> but the, the point is, the things which we really value are always continuous works relationships, perhaps, great institutions. And I think democracy is better to think of as an incomplete work than as a completed work. And one of the strange things you, which happens when you go to America at the moment and meet Tea Party people, they treat the Constitution as a sacred ob object, absolutely perfect and pure. And that may be one reason why no country in the world now copies the US Constitution when it becomes a democracy. Whereas I think in Europe, Democracy is constantly evolving and changing, and people are thinking of it as a work in progress. And I think what Involve was about when it started was really that spirit that democracy, although it is a noun, technically, we think, should think of it as a verb. It's a thing you do, and if you're not doing it, and if lots of people aren't doing it, it atrophies. Its, auto, its default state is stagnation, and it's only when it's treated as a labor that it remains alive and relevant. And you just told me earlier this wonderful statistic uh, that in Norway, one in 80 people have served as democratically elected representatives. In Britain, it's one in 5,000. I think in France, it's one in 100. So those are completely different experiences of democracy. On the one hand, as a verb, as something you do, and it's quite normal that your friends, your relatives may have been elected. And here, it's something you read about in the newspaper or you see on TV and sort of throw things at the screen. And that's a completely different experience of, of democracy. So what, what Involve was about was really attending to, in my mind, and Richard, <laughs> Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, no, it was attending to the craft detail of how you make democracy work. So just as a building like this, it's all very well to have the grand architectural plans, but it only works if you get the lighting to work, the plumbing to work, if you fix the leaking roof. And the audio. And the audio, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Involve was about attending to the detail. Because there were lots of grand ideas about participation and engagement, but if you couldn't get the practical detail to work, all of that was worthless. And 10 years on, on the one hand, it's great that Involve is here and thriving and is now on a second very eminent chairman, second very eminent sort of director. But in some ways, what's happened as well is I think some of the, 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 the diagnosis which led to Involve has become more mainstream. I think many more people now would accept that the essentially 19th century institutions of democracy, parliaments, elections, and so on, are really creaking, are really in need of a, 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 a revival, whereas that was perhaps a bit more of a minority feeling today. There's also, I think, more of a consensus that many of the ways people are reacting to that are pretty unhealthy. Most of the new parties across Europe are essentially parties against, like Five Star, or maybe UKIP here. They're very good at saying what they're against, but you ask them what they're for, and there's almost nothing to say. And yet democracy has to be about offering yeah, visions, offering positive alternatives to people about what, um, 
uh, about what could be done. Oh my God. Now, final couple of points from me. One of the, the joys for me about this year, 2014, is I'm being sort of thrown back into Involve land, as it were, through a very nice project we're doing at Nesta, which is working with various parliaments across Europe, designing new online platforms for engaging their citizens. They will be meeting today in Brussels, I was with some of them uh, yesterday, with the Finns, the Icelandics, the Estonians and others who take it for granted in an age where most people live half their life on a smartphone, democracy actually should be there. In an age where people expect in daily life, in their friendships, in their shopping, constant feedback, constant voice, it's kind of weird if democracy doesn't give you voice except in the most minimal way at election times. So many things which are kind of obvious to you in this room are on the one hand becoming more obvious to many other people, but we're having an opportunity to think that through, working with um, Tim Berners-Lee, the World Wide Web Corporation, the Chief Technology Officer of Twitter and others, to design new technology platforms which can hopefully really excite people and get mass engagement at every stage of the democratic process. And partly in preparing for this project we're doing, a few months ago I did a talk in, in the Netherlands trying to look at what was happening to democratic innovation. And I came away actually really heartened by what was happening across the world. The amazing examples in Brazil or India, across Europe and North America, of people imagining and trying out for real new ways of engagement, of involvement, and many of them working uh, pretty well. Uh, and it's pretty good here that we have the speaker, John Burke, with his new commission on, it's called Digital Democracy, you know, with an enthusiasm for seeing how the mother of parliaments might actually, you know, catch up, take a lead uh, in, uh, in engaging citizens in new ways. So that's all good. And what's interesting about the debate now, which is perhaps wasn't there 10 years ago, is in many other fields we have a slightly different discourse, which says that good, how many of you are familiar with the phrase epistemic democracy? Nobody. Okay. You don't read your academic books. There is now a sub-discipline of epistemic democracy, which essentially says part of the purpose of a democracy isn't just to represent the people in their votes, it's actually to tap into the knowledge of the people to make government better, which is kind of, of course, true, but got forgotten in many of the dominant theories of democracy in the 20th century. So epistemic democracy, people like Henry Farrell and others, asked how you design your institutions to tap the brain power. It could be of citizens, could be of doctors, could be of small business people, to help design policies, to help have feedback when they're working or not. And that's a completely different vision, a vision really of collective intelligence in democracy, which I think is a very inspiring, animating idea of involvement for the 21st century, different, I think, from uh, 10 or 20 years ago. Very final point. Um, in many ways, what Involve is part of is a kind of, as I said, craft knowledge. Many of you will have perhaps read Richard Sennett's work on this, that you need 10,000 hours work at anything before you're any good at it, whether it's playing a piano or dancing, or perhaps working on democratic participation. <laughs> so 10 years on, probably a lot more than 10,000 hours on, I think Involve has come of age. I think we've got a lot to celebrate because, not just because it's here still, which was by no means guaranteed, and many of you worked hard to get through some pretty difficult uh, times, but you're on the right side of history. And I think the tides are moving in the direction of the agenda all of you in this room are part of. And uh, in some ways, the next decade, the second decade of Involve, has the prospects of being incredibly exciting and perhaps delivering a lot of things which seemed a bit common sense to all of you but still are a bit marginal from the agenda. Maybe in 10 years' time, it will seem blindingly obvious to everyone, and that will be true success. Thank you.